Rust doesn't support the traditional concept of inheritance. And given that many popular modern languages do, that can be a little tough for some folks to come to terms with. And some even argue that a language cannot be considered object-oriented if it doesn't support inheritance. But Rust does support polymorphism, and you can still write object-oriented Rust in a way that is pretty similar to other languages. But there are some key concepts that if you're not aware of, can really trip you up. We're going to demystify those concepts in this video. Of course, by polymorphism, I mean the ability to potentially treat the same piece of data as different types, depending on what you need to do with it. An easy example of polymorphism is if we consider different kinds of vehicles. There are different types of vehicles that are capable of driving on land, different types of vehicles that are capable of floating on water, and some special vehicles that can do both. Imagine we want to write some business logic where the specific type of vehicle is irrelevant, but the type of surface that the vehicle can traverse is relevant. If you're familiar with implementing polymorphism in other languages, this example may feel really familiar in the beginning, but don't worry, there's a curveball in the middle that you might not see coming that'll make things a little more interesting. First thing we're gonna do is create a struct called sedan. And sedan is gonna have one method called drive. And all drive does is print sedan as driving. It takes a shared reference to itself, which we're not using at the moment, but don't worry about that for now. And let's write a main function to test this. Cool. we get sedan is driving when we run it. Now say we want to write a function called road trip that takes a shared reference to sedan and calls the drive method on sedan. So instead of calling drive directly, we're gonna call road trip instead. Say we have another struct called SUV that also implements a drive method. And SUV's drive method is gonna be pretty much the same as Sedan's drive method. Cool. So Road Trip only cares that whatever got passed in has a drive method. SUV and Sedan have a drive method, but we can only pass in Sedan. If we wanna pass in SUV, we could make a separate function change it to SUV. That's one option. If you've done polymorphism in other languages, you this is gonna feel pretty familiar so far and you probably know it's coming, but there is a curveball I mentioned that you'll see in a minute. Cool, so we get sedan is driving and SUV is driving. That works as expected. So how can we implement this functionality where we want road trip to take anything that implements drive, call the dot drive method on that thing, whatever it is. If you're doing this in a language like Java or TypeScript, you could just make an interface called land capable and have road trip take a parameter of type land capable and you'd be good to go. Rust is a little different. Instead of interfaces, Rust has something called traits, which are very similar to interfaces, but with some subtle differences. So we're gonna create a trait called land capable. And it's gonna have one method drive that takes a shared reference to itself. We wanna tell the compiler that the drive method in this code block is to implement the land capable trait. So to do that, we're gonna do impl land capable for SUV. And we're gonna do the same thing for sedan and we're good to go. Now you might be tempted to think we're gonna delete this SUV method here you might be tempted to think we can just do this, that we can just do road trip vehicle of type land capable, but we cannot. It says add dine keyword before this trait. So we're gonna take that at face value for a minute and just do dine land capable. Okay, and that works. Let's get rid of this SUV specific one here. Okay, so it seems like we don't have any compiler errors. Let's see if that works. We get what we expect. So what is going on here? Why can't we just tell the compiler this parameter is of type land capable? We're running face first here into one of Rust's core tenants, and that tenant is zero cost abstractions. What zero cost abstractions means is if there's any sort of added cost, we're gonna have to add that cost explicitly. And Dyn is a good example of this. What Dyn refers to is something called dynamic dispatch, which is in contrast to something called static dispatch that we'll go over in a minute. For functions that have a parameter with a Dyn keyword, arguments passed into those functions are actually gonna be represented by what's called a fat pointer. And a fat pointer 
is a collection of two pointers, one of which points to the data of the struct and another which points to what's called a V table that has pointers to all the functions that the struct implements. The downside to the dynamic dispatch approach is that we incur a runtime penalty because we have to do two pointer dereferences to call any functions on the thing that got passed in. The alternative to dynamic dispatch is something called static dispatch. If you've ever used generics in a language like C++ or Rust, generics work by creating a copy of the entity that has a generic for each of the types for which that thing is used in the compiled binary. So if I have a generic function called road trip of type T, it's gonna look at every type T that's potentially passed into road trip, and it's gonna create a copy of road trip in the compiled executable. That can be less than ideal if road trip is called with a lot of different types because that would result in a copy of road trip for all of those types. And dynamic dispatch might be a better choice in that scenario. So it comes down to what you prefer. To implement static dispatch, instead of dyne, we just do impl. So that's the only change we made and and we still get the same result. So in this small program, we're not gonna notice any substantial difference, but in a larger program with lots of types or a program that's very performance critical, that decision between dynamic and static dispatch is pretty critical. Another cool thing about traits in Rust is the concept of a default implementation. And if you're familiar with interfaces in Java or TypeScript, the same concept exists there. If I wanna make it optional for an implementer of land capable to implement drive, I can do that by providing a default implementation in the land capable trait. So I go to that trait, remove the semicolon after the method name and write the implementation here. Now, because I have this default implementation, I can actually go and remove the implementation of drive in SUV and sedan if I wanted to. And I'm not getting any errors, even though I don't have that drive method. So now I get default drive because it's called once on sedan and then another time on SUV. What if I have another trait called water capable? And it has one method called float. And then I want another trait to represent a vehicle that can both float and drive, like a hovercraft. So I'm gonna make another trait called amphibious. And amphibious isn't gonna have any specific methods, but we do want to make sure that anything that implements amphibious implements both land capable and water capable. So let's make a hovercraft. Implement amphibious. Right now, Amphibious has no methods. If we wanna force any implementations of Amphibious to implement both land capable and water capable, we can use something called super traits. And to specify super traits, you just put a colon after the trait name, and then a plus delimited list of all the traits that you want to be super traits of this trait. So we'll do water capable plus land capable. So we have this implementation of amphibious on hovercraft and we're getting this error saying the trait bound hovercraft land capable is not satisfied. So what we need to do is create an implementation of land capable for hovercraft as well. Since we already have a default implementation of drive, we can just add this empty land capable block here. And same thing for water capable. And we wanna write a function that takes an amphibious vehicle as a parameter. So we'll do function uh, traverse frozen lake And then we'll do a drive and a float. Okay, and then we'll add a hovercraft here. It's out at the top. And then traverse. We'll delete SUV and sedan just so we don't get mixed up here. So now we're able to write this traverse frozen lake function. We don't need these semicolons here. Cool. And of course, just like before, we can have a land capable specific implementation for hovercraft if we wanted to. So we could actually go and implement the drive function here. Cool. So we see hovercraft driving and then default float. That's a quick run through of using traits to facilitate object oriented programming in Rust. Now you're officially an implementer of the object oriented programming capable trait. Speaking of doing interesting things with Rust, check out this other video, Is Rust the New King of Data Science? to see how to use Rust for data science. No prior Rust or data science knowledge is required. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.